Okay, hi, uh, my name is uh, Derek, and uh, in this video, we're going to be looking over linear regression. Okay, so this is kind of an important video for our machine learning class. This is the start of where we're going to try to be looking under the hood. Okay, so, I mean, a goal of this course is, is you know, I mean, I hope you become familiar with using, like, the scikit-learn framework and, in general, how you uh, can, can use, you know, pre-existing uh, uh, implementations of machine learning libraries in order to, you know, create machine learning models and, and, and do data analysts, analytics, and things like that. But, you know, to, to really um, be able to use these things well, you have to understand at least a little bit kind of how they work, all right? And, and so uh, this, this is chapter four from our uh, hands-on machine learning um, library with some materials also from uh, Dr. Ng's course uh, that we use kind of as supplemental. All right. So our, our goal in this video is um, just to make certain that everybody kind of understands the basics of how linear of fitting a line to a set of data points works. Okay, that's and that's kind of really what a linear regression is. Okay, so we'll start with a bit of a review of, of kind of basic geometry or algebra. So like you know the 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 slope intercept equation of a line. If you remember all that stuff back, maybe even high school or before. I don't know. Um, and then, you know, we'll talk about general linear models for ML, kind of the implications of this. Uh, we'll look at performing linear fits using NumPy's PolyFit, and we'll also look at uh, using the scikit-learns linear regression. Um, um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the cost functions. Okay, so this is an important concept, cost functions for linear regression. Uh, and we'll look at some other techniques um, um, for fitting, uh, in particular, the, the normal equation here, okay? So, like I said, this is going to be kind of um, um, the first part of Chapter 4 from our Hands-On Machine Learning uh, textbook. Um, so, um, actually, this textbook I'm probably going to end up breaking up into at least three weeks. Um, the, this, uh, sorry, this chapter. Uh, this is really, the, he put a lot of stuff into this one chapter, and it really needs to be broken up, okay? So, so yeah, anyway, we're looking mostly at the cost function, the, the, the basics of linear regression, and defining a cost function uh, in this video here. So, um, so, so linear regression, you know, I mean, a lot of you probably already have run across doing these kinds of things before, you know, and, and you in general probably know what I mean, even if you've never done it yourself, to fit a line to a set of data points, okay? So lots of natural phenomenon or, 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 or things that we want to study naturally have a linear relationship, okay? So for every change of, of some dependent, um, of, of some independent variable, um, x, we will get a corresponding linear change in the what we call the dependent variable y. All right. So um, anyway, so, so uh, you know, in order to make certain to try and you know give an example of this to understand these things, we will use with just a single um, feature. Okay. So so uh, the, the the feature again is uh, in various contexts. You can think of this as the independent variable. So this is the thing that you want to model or, or that you want to fit. And then, you know, so we want to predict y, um, and that's the dependent variable. It depends on x, right? And if we suspect that there's a linear relationship between these two, the best model is going to be a line um, that um, we can use to, to, you know, given some new value of x, would predict what the likely value of, of our dependent variable y is, all right? Um, so I'm going to be using um, this example data of, um, um, this is housing prices again, although it's not the same from our chapter two. So this is just simply a data set where we have um, an in, um, independent variable, which is the size of the house. Um, and then the dependent variable that we want to predict or model is going to be the, the price of the house in um, in thousands of dollars. So for a, a house with a um 1,400 square feet, a little bit over 1,400 square feet, um, the, the price is like about 249000 about $250,000, basically, is, is what this data is showing, okay? So, yeah, you might better visualize it if we do a scatter plot, all right? So, again, the, um, the x variable here um, is our um, 
independent variable, it's called the independent variable, right? So basically from the size of the house, we want to predict what its selling price is gonna be, all right? And this is linear because, you know, we've plotted this um, in, in uh, you know, not using a log scale, just using a regular scale. And, the, and in general, it looks like for every, let's say, 500 size increase in um, the size of the house, you get some corresponding, you know, you know not, not $500 or not uh, 5000 or 50000 but but you get some um, constant um, increase in the price. Okay, if, if you understand me, right? So if, if you know, if, if, if the house price increases, let, let's say, so it looks like it increases approximately from, say, 200000 to, I don't know, um, to an average of 250000 So So $50,000 for every 500 square feet, approximately, right? So so a linear relationship means that every time we, we change by 500 um, square feet, we should expect uh, about, you know, this is just approximate, an approximation I'm making, but, but about a 50,000, right? So if, if that amount changes, so if, if the relationship between the independent and the dependent variable um, is different, so for, if for this 500 uh, square feet, um, it increased by, you know, 100,000, you know, twice as much, then the relationship would be nonlinear, all right? So anyway, a, a linear relationship looks like it might be a reasonable fit for this data. So, so there might be a line, you know, again, you'll never get a perfect fit because there's going to be noise, right? Um, there, and, and there's other factors, right? So if, if we truly wanted to build a model to predict housing prices from um, data about the house, probably we're going to need more information because other things are going to be factors in, in how people value a house. And so not just the size, but, uh, you know, number of bathrooms and bedrooms and the location of, of shopping and, and school districts and, you know, uh, the size of the yard and, and other things, right? And, and, of course, this is even more complicated because different people are going to have different values, you know, so, so you, you'll never get a perfect, there'll, there'll be noise. No, no matter how many features that you had, you wouldn't be able to get um, a perfect model of it because um, there's going to be variations in how people value different things and, and so on, okay? But, you know, still, it would be useful to have a model, even though there's going to be noise that we can never capture in our model, you know, um, um, if, if you want to buy or sell houses, you might want to have a model that you can plug in different features, you know, size and maybe some other things, um, and, and give a, a rough idea, you know, of how much you think the value of the house should be using past data and current data, all right? So, um, like I said, you know, I don't know how much people will need this or not, but I'm, so I'm gonna go real quickly through this. Um, kind of a review of some basic geometry or, or, um, or maybe algebra, you know, you might have gotten it in, in either of course, uh, of a course like that a long time ago. You might have forgotten this kind of stuff or vaguely remember it, right? But, you know, so, so to understand fitting a, a line to these points, you know, we can go back and, 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 and remember some things like, uh, you know, so how do we fit a line between two points, right? So t two points uniquely define a line. So there's only one line that will go through two particular points that you give, right? Kind of basic geometry. Um, and we can describe um, any line we can describe with uh, an equation, the, the, the point intercept uh, equation of a line is the, the most common way to describe it, okay? So the, again, the, the slope basically tells you that linear re relationship. So it, it tells you for every change in x, how much of a change in y should happen, right? So again, if, if, if when we go from 1600 to 1700, our line goes from 330 to 340, that means for a change of 100 in um, x, we get a change in 10 of y. So that would be a slope of, of actually 1 tenth, right? Because it's, it's 1 tenth the size there. So that's what our slope is, right? Um, and again, that's just an approximation. That was a little bit of an under, so it should probably be a bit higher of a slope than 1 tenth, right? But there's many lines with that same slope. So you've got this line that's going to go through these two points. you got a parallel line below it, a parallel line. So, so this, to uniquely identify these lines, you need one other parameter. So that, that's the intercept. Um, so yeah, typically, this is going to be the value uh, when x is 0. So if, if x is 0, this uh, this term will go away, and this will tell you exactly where uh, you know what the y value is 
the next zero. So that's known as the intercept term, right? Um, so we can calculate both of these real quickly, if, if you remember. So, so slope is just the difference in y divided by the difference in x. That'll give you this m, as, as it's usually referred to. So yeah, it is a little bit more above 0.1. It's 0.14 almost for our slope. So basically, again, make certain you intuitively understand what that means. So I, I, I maybe should have labeled these. But again, this is square feet still, because these were two points um, from this data that I picked kind of at random. Um, actually, it was, just, it was the first two points in the data set, right? But they happen to work well for this illustration here. So, um, so a, a 0.14 slope means that for every 100, for every change in square feet of 100 square feet, the price is going to go 0.14 times 100, or uh, it's going to change by 14,000. Uh, dollars, right? So, so not ten thousand, a little bit more than ten thousand, fourteen thousand dollars, right? Or for every one square foot, the price changes by point one three eight eight thousands of dollars, right? Because this isn't thousands of dollars here, so so, so it's actually one hundred thirty-eight dollars. Every one square foot corresponds to one hundred thirty-eight dollars. If I did my math in my head correctly, there, okay. Um, and then from those, I mean, I can I can define or visualize or create the rest of the line given the two parameters, the slope and the intercept, right? Um, oh, um, yeah, to calculate the the, the intercept, uh, we can plug in the slope for one of these points. So, so like if you, if you choose this point, plug it in, uh, we, we find that in order to get the line with that slope um, that goes exactly through these two points, it has to have a, a y-intercept of 107,000. So... So here's a little bit where this model breaks down. I think I plot it here. Um, so let's just show the fit of those two lines. Um, although I, I maybe should have shown this um, all the way to zero to illustrate what I'm thinking about right now. So if we, if we extend this line all the way so we can see the y-intercept um, at when x is zero. Um, so these were our two points, the line that fits through it. Um, our y-intercept was at 107, right? When, when x was zero, so basically this is saying that uh, you know, so so th this model isn't going to be correct for the whole rate because it doesn't make sense to have a house of zero square feet, especially a house of zero square feet that that sells for a price of one hundred seven thousand dollars, right? Um, so, although well, I mean maybe a little bit because you know some of that is is the the price of the land itself, right? So that there's uh, for this particular data, um, some of this is, is giving kind of what the what, what, what just the the cost of the land that you would need to to purchase up front to to buy and build a house on, you know. But uh, anyway, um, so. Um, So that, yeah, so, so with uh, the, the slope and the intercept and, again, using, like, vectorized computations, we can actually draw the line like I did here. Maybe I'll go back to, you know, uh, more of the range of our data, which was about 1,500 to 2,200 here. So, um, all right. So then again, um, so back to the idea of fitting a line or linear regression, okay? So, of course, when you have two points, two points define a line, and you can always fit um, a line perfectly to go through two points, but what if you have three points, all right? So, and, and this is just as an introduction, so this is now thinking about, you know, so your data is never going to be perfectly linear. There'll be noise, at least, if nothing else, right? So you can't fit a line that will go through exactly through every point, right, for your, your linear model, right? So what line best fits these three points if I wanted to have a line that was the best model of these, right? So that, that gets you to think about what do we mean by best or the best fit or fittedness in this context here, you know? So is it the line instead that goes through these two points? Is it the line that goes through these two points, which is, you know, a completely different line, almost perpendicular to, the, to this line, right? Um, you know, is it some line in between? Maybe, and, and and how can you know? So we need a way to um, formalize that, right? What do we mean by best? We we have to come up with a definition, and that's what the cost function is. Okay, um, uh, the the cost function is an attempt to 
define which line is the best fit for these three points or for an arbitrary number of points. Like for all these, I think there's like 40 some points in total um, in this example data set that we're using here. All right. Um, so, so yeah, if we go back to the full data set, um, so for example, this line that we just picked by chance for these two points um, may or may not, um, so kind of despite what I said in my discussion, is actually not too bad. I mean, it looks like it's almost the right slope. But again, that was only kind of by chance. Like, like if the first two points had been like this point and this point, you know, the, the line would have been like this, right? And that that looks like a very bad fit. In fact, it's got the the, the it's got a it's got a uh, instead of a positive slope, it's got a negative slope, and and it definitely looks like this data has a positive slope, meaning that when x changes, increases, y increases, right? And when x decreases, y decreases, right? So so anyway, I mean, the slope looks pretty good, just intuitively, maybe not quite the best. I mean, intuitively, something about that slope, but maybe you know, down a little bit is, is a better fit, um, right? But, but again, so I'm, try, I'm trying to say that you probably also have the same intuition of, of what would be, if I asked you to draw the best line, you know, you would draw something close to this, probably close to what I'm thinking, you know, maybe a little bit below that, right, with approximately about that slope, right? Um, okay. So before uh, uh, we go into the cost function, um, so there's lots of things that you can use to fit a line to a set of data. Um, there, there's a method in NumPy to do it. There's a method in scikit-learn, um, well, the, the linear regression um, object class in scikit-learn will do a linear regression, which is basically fitting a line. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a, um, there's a function in stats model library, which which is good for doing linear regressions and linear fits, um, and and lots of other options in Python. So so the basic one is polyfit. Okay, so actually polyfit does a polynomial fit. So you can actually fit a polynomial of more than one degree, which um, we'll see some examples of uh, in the next lecture video or two. All right. But uh, if you fit a one degree polynomial, that that means a polynomial of the form, um, I probably should have written it out, but uh, a one degree polynomial is a polynomial of the form y equals, um, so, so like, like a two degree polynomial is going to be ax a x squared plus bx to the one or bx plus c, right? So that, that's a degree two polynomial. So a degree one polynomial is just y, you know, um, ax to the one plus uh, plus b plus c uh, or plus b, all right. Where a and b are parameters, right? So in, in order to fit a particular polynomial, you have to determine the properties of a, b, and c, or a, b, if, if it's just a degree one polynomial, right? So and this should be, you know, so for so a degree one polynomial is our slope intercept, right? So degree polynomial is um, mx plus um, uh, b, the, the, the slope and the intercept, right? Where if you determine the slope uh, and the intercept of, of a particular line, that gives you the polynomial. So what, what, what polyfit is doing, though, is it's dis determining the slope and the intercept that gives you the best line in some sense that we have to talk about next, um, the, the, the best fit here. So, so if you ask for it, the polyfit to do it, give you a degree one polynomial or a line fitting, you know, the, my x data, which is the house size in square feet, um, and and our y data, which is the uh, the price, right? So the uh, independent and the de dependent variable here for our degree one polynomial. Um, you see that the slope is indeed close to 0.14 like our, our first line that was just by chance, that slope, it's a little bit under that, 0.134, so. Um, and it has an intercept of 71. So like we said, uh, it, it, remember the intercept of this one was 107. Um, so again, don't be confused because our x doesn't go all the way down to zero here. So, so anyway, th this intercept for this line I draw was like at 107. But for the best line, whatever the best fit is, means here, um, it's it's both it's it's 
the slope is pretty close to that, not quite as steep, um, and the intercept is lower down at, at $71,000. Um, right? So yeah, here's the, uh, the, uh, the best fit line. Um, so I mean, yeah, this was our fit, but, but this is what polyfit claims is the line that best fits this data, the linear relationship that um, has the lowest cost, as I'll start talking about here in a second, um, when fitting a linear model to our data here, all right? So by the way, uh, so another way you can fit a line to uh, a, a set of two-dimensional data is using Seaborn, um, which I showed in the, uh, the lecture notebook for the, the Seaborn library. So basically, you know, if you look at this, this is the same one, exactly the same line that Polyfit gave um, my, um, my, my, figure isn't quite the same aspect ratio, so it looks a little slightly different, but, um, and, and, and this, um, filled in area actually represents what's known as a, um, uh, the, uh, the bounds, so this is a confidence interval, so I, I think it's, it's like a 90% confidence interval, which is standard, so it means that we're 90, we're, we're con this is the best line, and, and there's a 90% confidence, 90% chance that the true best line is, is going to be somewhere you know, within the boundaries of, of this um, shaded area that was calculated. So you have to know a little bit about statistics. And, uh, so we're going to kind of go over more about how this best, how we create this best fit line. It's a little bit beyond the scope how you can also do like a, a confidence interval or something like that. Uh, but you got to take a course in statistics um, or review your statistics if you ever took one um, um, for how you might calculate things like that from a set of data points. So. Okay, so in general, machine learning models um, um, f that are trying to do a linear relationship, and, and lots of machine learning models have, a, uh, you know, are, are going to be fitting a linear relationship at their heart. So even even so, linear regression and even logistic regression that we'll talk about start with um, a, a linear fit of a set of data. All right. So, but we, we, we first normally generalize this to instead of um, M and B for the slope and the intercept, we, we name these parameters theta zero and theta one. So, so in this, we've just renamed the, the parameters, but theta zero is, is our um, intercept term, right? And theta one is the slope, okay? We do this because, you know, it, it's, it's not interesting. So real data sets that we have, we might want to fit a linear model to it using a linear regression, but we're going to have many more... Um, independent parameters than just a single one that we might want to try and model um, some dependent variable of. So for again for house you know we, we might have uh, square feet as our x1 feature but then we might have number of bathrooms as x2 feature, um, number of bedrooms as our x3 feature, um, the age of the house as the x4 feature right and so on and, and you know for nowadays it's not uncommon to have data sets with thousands or tens of thousands or millions of features that you want to try and model, right? So, so this generalizes. So everything I talk about here, you know, we're going to stick with uh, still with just a, an example with a single feature and then the intercepts. So we only have two parameters that we have to fit um, when we have one dimensional data here. So, so one independent variable that we're trying to fit a dependent variable on, right? But every, everything we talk about for cost functions and fitting a, a, a linear model, uh, com, you know, completely applies even if you have more than one feature, right? It's just you can't really visualize when you have three or more um, it, it, as a line like this. And it's, and it's not a line, it's a hyperplane. So, um, so if you have two features, it's a plane, it's a, it's a two-dimensional plane in three dimensions. If you have three, three or more features, it's a hyperplane. So that's your fitted um, model, so. So some notation here, um, but, uh, but you ought to kind of try and understand it. So from here, uh, again, we'll, con we'll continue to generalize this um, so that we can use 
linear algebra. So, so, so this, this uh, allows us to think of this as a vector of parameters. So instead of theta 0, theta 1, theta 2, we have a vector theta. And, and really, I should, um, I should bold this. Um, so our textbook usually bolds these that represent a vector. So theta here, um, bold theta, is just a, 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 a vector of theta 0, theta 1, theta 2, whatever, how many parameters we have for our features. And then x is going to be also a vector of, of x1, x2, x3 for a particular item, right? Um, and, and then theta x is just the dot product, so when you do a, a, a vector vector multiplication, um, you get the same result of, you know, um, if, if you add in a term for this intercept term that's always 1. So if x0 is always 1, the dot product of this theta vector and this x vector, where the theta holds theta 0, theta 1, theta 2, and so on, and the x vector holds x0, x1, x2, the, the dot product of those, you know, using linear algebra is, is theta 0, x0, plus theta 1, x1, plus so on. So again, if you didn't quite follow that, you know, um, an, an example. So if we use the, the two parameters that we just fit, so the, the, the intercept that we found that was be that, that polyfit said was the best intercept, which was the 71.27 in the slope, uh, we can create this theta vector, so, so bold theta by hand, which is just a vector of the two parameters, theta 0 and theta 1. Um, and if we want to use that to calculate the house of a price, uh, the, the price of a house, um, so here, I mean, um, the example I'm using, we're going to be using the, um, oh, just let me do it. So, so um, x here, so notice what I did was um, um, these were the, the, the prices of our data set. So again, there's like 40, oh, there's 47 of these in total, right? So what I did was I created um, um, an X uh, matrix, which has a shape of um, 47 rows by two columns, right? 47 by two. Uh, but, so the first column is going to be X0, so it's all ones. And then the second column is X1, which is the, the price um, in square feet, right? And so then what we're claiming is if you just do the dot product, you know, so if you do this theta times this, you'll actually get your prediction, what the predicted value would be for each one of these houses with, with the given square feet that was in our data set that we used to fit the model, right? Um, although note, so I, I, I mean, I, I know this confuses students all the time. Um, so how to explain this? Um, the, the normal mathematical notation when it just specifies this simply as theta times x is because uh, we're normally thinking of, of it, mathematicians normally think of this as like a, a row vector instead of a column vector. So think of this transpose where that um, the, the row zero was all ones and the row one was all um, the, the house prices, the x1, okay? So here, instead, we've used the column zero to be our x zero. And, and, and I prefer this way because this is the way that we normally think of data, like a, in a data frame. And this is the way that scikit-learn wants your data. So it wants each row to be um, a, a sample, and then the columns to be the feature, right? And we only have one feature. We, we have this dummy intercept feature, x zero, and then we have our x one, which is the um, size in square feet, OK? so. Um, but yeah, if, if you use it like this, then you have to slightly modify. So instead of doing uh, theta times x, you have to take the transpose. So if you take the transpose of x, you'll get in kind of the row form. So then if you do that, the dot product, it'll work. Because remember, theta is, um, um, I think I had the shape here, didn't I? So sh theta is just a vector of size 2. Uh, this, is, this is 47 by 2. Um, and, and you remember the dot product is doing a matrix multiplication. So if I do the transpose, it becomes 2 by 47. So you have a, a vector of shape 2 times a matrix after you do the transpose of 2 by 47. And the result is a 2 by 47 shaped. So, so the result doing the dot product of this vector of size 2 and, and the transpose, which is now shaped 2 by 47, is... is um, 
Um, oh, it's actually like, so you think of the vectors being shaped one by two. So one by two times two by 47. So you get just 47 house prices, okay? So, so the, the in, this ends up being, um, um, so, so our predictions, I'll call y hat, ends up being actually just a, you know, which is really what we want, it ends up being just a vector of 47 values, right? And, and again, this is going to be the predicted um, house price for each one of these, these um, sizes, right? And again, the, the predictions won't be, uh, the predictions will be on the line that we fit, so they won't, the, the, they'll be off a bit. Um, so, um, so uh, yeah, I talk a little bit, so, I mean, an alternative, if you do x times theta, you get the same thing, so, so uh, instead of theta times x transpose, we could just reverse those, so now we have a 2 by 47, um, or sorry, we have a 47 by 2, so, so x before you transpose is 47 rows by 2 columns, times a two by one uh, or a, a vector with with um, two values in it so the result is a 47 by one uh, again it's it's the same predictions right um, so and then what I started saying was, so if you look at the predictions, the what I called the y hat, so it's so a y with the, the little hat symbol over it is usually used to, to differentiate the predictions from y, which which are the, the true prices here. So you'll see that we ended up with a prediction for every corresponding one of our 47 values. But of course, the prediction is going to be on the line. So our prediction is on this, this line, which was the best model, the best fitting linear model for our data here. So so, 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 yeah, keep that in mind because this is going to tell us, th this is going to be how we can, um, what we mean by best here. So if you look at this, uh, so, so why is this line the best line for this data, right? It's the best line, so, so, uh, so, so to answer that question, let's take a step back. So why, wh what is... Um, how good is, is, is are each of these predictions? So, so how good is this prediction? So intuitively, you know, this prediction is better than like this one because this prediction had a bigger error. So this was the true value, and we predicted it uh, being uh, more expensive than it was, right? And, and this one, again, we, we overpriced it a little bit, but uh, it was closer, right? So in some sense, this prediction ended up being better than this one. And the, these predictions um, underpriced it a little bit, so our prediction was below what the true value was, right? And our very worst prediction might be maybe this one here. So notice the, 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 some, somehow this really small house is, is kind of really expensive, almost $500,000. And, and, you know, we, we predict down here at about half the price, right? And, of course, our best ones, uh, you know, some of these are, were almost right on the line, you know, so we have almost zero. So, so if you understand that, that, that tells you basically how I can give an answer to, okay, how, was, how good was an individual prediction? It's basically the magnitude, the, the difference between my prediction, you know, how far away my prediction was from the true price. That, 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 that's, that's how much of an error you had there, right? Um, so that, that, that basically allows us to talk about the cost function then, right? So um, so the, the error for any individual value, so like if I want to know what the error was for the, the first value in this um, data set, is just the difference between the true price, the actual price, which is in Y, and our predicted price from this best fit linear model, which, which I have in Y hat currently. So in this case, it was a magnitude of about $45,000 off, right? But like I said, I mean, it's really the magnitude. So whether I, I, I under-predicted, so, so I low-balled the price or high-balled the price, it's really how far away I'm from it, right? Um, 
So, but and, and before I, I get to that, um, um, and, and, and really how you're doing on a single prediction doesn't tell you how well my, my model fits the data overall, right? Because sometimes we do really well, sometimes we're doing really bad. So, so how is this the best model, you know, in, in some sense? Well, the best model is going to be the one that minimizes for all of the data points that you have that you're trying to fit, that, that minimizes the errors, right? That's what the cost function is, okay? So let me repeat that. Make certain you understand that. The, the best model for a linear fit like this is the one that has the minimum error if you sum up all these errors between your predictions and um, and um, the, the the model the, the predicted the between the predictions and the true um, value of what you're trying to predict right so and again you know the, 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 there's there's an infinite number of models of lines I could have you know I could have this line I could have a line that's exactly the same slope but below it or parallel above it you know, I can have slightly different slopes, so one that goes more like this, or one that goes more like this, right? So in order to find the best line, I have to, uh, the, the best model, the best fit, I have to calculate the cost for all of those infinite number of lines, right? Of course, I'm not going to calculate for the infinite number of lines, but, but, but uh, among all the potential infinitely number, infinitely available fits I could have, I have to find the one that has the lowest cost, right? And, and that's what, that's, that's, that's actually leading to the next video after this one. So once we define our cost function, then we have to have some method to search among the possible fits to find the one that has the best the, the lowest cost. So in this case, we're trying to minimize the cost because we want the air, the, the sum of the errors to be as, as small as possible, right? Um, so yeah, um, to, to get back on track here, the, the, the cost of a single house uh, or the, the, the error on a single prediction doesn't give us the whole picture, so we want the errors overall. Them. So, you know, again, using vectorized um, operations in Python and NumPy, you know, I can get, I can just as easily get the errors for all of them at once by doing y hat minus y, so this is all these, and, and as I've already described, it's really the sum of these that I want, but, you know, with, with a caveat, so you have, to, you have to be careful, if you sum these up, they actually sum up to zero, which is actually a property of finding the best fit line here, you, you expect the sum of the, the, the raw errors to be zero, right? Right, but but that's not really true because really it's 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 the magnitude. Okay, so so I, I mean I'm not getting zero errors. So, some errors, uh, you know, I'm 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 too low, right? So um, my um, so since we're taking y hat minus y, um, when I'm when I'm underpricing the house, I'm gonna get a negative result. So so here that was I think that was probably the one that I pointed out where we were almost. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars, almost two hundred thousand um, dollars, underpricing the house, right? Or if I'm predicting too much, um, it will get will get a positive result, right? So really, to 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 tell how well we're doing, I need to, you know, some of these. So they they cancel out when I sum these up, they end up canceling themselves out, and and they actually almost exactly cancel themselves out, which is a property of how we perform this fit. Okay, uh, but to what I really want though is is to sum up the magnitude, right? So so one, the obvious way if I mention that to students is say, well, just take the absolute value, okay? And that's one that's one way of defining a cost function. You can take the absolute value and sum that up. And so this is really the true cost, right? Because my model isn't a perfect fit, right? If your model is a perfect fit, you will really get a, a sum of your errors to be zero. Right, but but when it's not perfect fit, you'll get some non-zero result. But but you have to sum up the magnitudes, right? Not just the the raw plus and minuses. Um, and that's the sum. And if you want to get kind of a, a feel for the average that you're off, we can just take the average of that. So divide by the number of samples m. Okay. So so yeah, this, this is technically known as the um, absolute error. Um, so, so the sum of the absolute error. 
um, and then this is the mean of the absolute error. So when we take the when we divide by the by m the number of samples, we get the average or the mean absolute error. Right. And this is actually a cost function you can use, so we can use this. So this is basically telling me that on average my my absolute value error is off by fifty two thousand dollars. Right. Which might not sound like a great fit, but that that's really the best fit that we can get with a linear model here. For, for this set of data. So the MAE is an example of a cost function. Um, and it, it tells us how well our model is doing in make, making predictions. Um, but, but actually, the, the, M, the, the mean absolute error isn't the one that's used most for linear regressions and, and as a cost function in general for lots of machine learning. So instead, we actually normally use the mean squared error. Okay? So the reason why the mean squared error is preferred um, is, um, well, I mean, for, for, for a couple of different reasons. So um, the, the absolute value... Just, just real quickly, the absolute value is, um, is, is, is a function that's discontinuous. So you can't really take the, um, the, um, the derivative of it. So later on, when we want to find the gradients of, of our cost function in order to do something like gradient descent, um, it, it's a lot tougher to work with an absolute value. So instead, we normally use the, the, the square the square of the error. So, so remember, of course, the square, if, if you have a negative and you square it, you'll get a positive, right? So, um, but of course, the, the square error will be much bigger, right? I mean, if your, number, if your numbers are, are bigger than one, when you square those, you'll get an even bigger number, right? But that's fine. But, but the, the, you know, all negatives will become positive when you square them, and positives will stay positive when you square them, right? So, so you can also just take the sum of the square of the errors, so the sum of the square of the differences. So here we often write this like this, but notice, so, so this here is again just our term for whatever theta is that we're trying to evaluate the cost of, that, that's the set of parameters that define a line that we're talking about right now, for each um, item in our data set, um, zero to our m items, right? And if we index by zero, like we do in Python, um, I, I normally write this notation, the summation is starting from zero up to m minus one. Um, but yeah, so, so you, you calculate your, your hypothesis by doing the, the, the theta times x, like we talked about, subtract that, um, that gives you the error, and you square that. And then you sum those all up, divide by m, and that's known as your mean squared error. Okay. So yeah, I talk about you know this notation, this this i here is this doesn't mean raising to a power. If you see this, really, this is just mathematical notation for the ith item, right? So so if, if uh, here we're, we're summing up over all the items in the data set, uh, and and each time in the summation, so so that that's that's equivalent to you know getting the ith item. If if you start at index zero, um, and and are NumPy arrays are indexed starting at zero in Python, you know, these are equivalent then, right? And likewise with yi, that's just the, the y, this is the true uh, ith value um, in our data set that we're trying to fit our model to, right? Um, so, we can calculate the, the, the sum squared error by just taking the sum of our errors. That, so, so we already had the errors um, above. So we'd already calculated the, the, the using a vectorized way, take the errors from above. So you can just square those errors and then sum them up. That's your sum squared error. Um, and then you can get the mean sum squared error by dividing by m. All right, but uh, again, here this is um, you know we need to care, compare apples to, to apples, not apples. So this is the, the the average of the squared error, right? So it, if if you want to get a feel for what the actual kind of error is that you're off, you need to take the square root of that. Okay, so the root mean sum squared error, uh, R M S E, um, is We'll, we'll change it back into the magnitude, you know. So here, the, the root mean squared error, now it's a little bit bigger than the absolute error, but, but it's, it's telling us that our root mean squared, uh, you know, that our average error um, 
in the same scale is, is off by $64,000, basically, all right? Um, okay, so that's the cost function that we're going to be using, all right? So make certain you understand. So we'll be using the, the root mean squared error over and over whenever we're doing regression problems like this, whenever we're trying to fit data to um, a dependent variable that's a real valued number, like the price of a house in dollars, all right? Um, So this, this video is already 45 minutes long, um, but um, yeah, let, let me kind of just real quickly then mention the normal equation, all right? So in the next video after this, um, we're, we're going to talk about um, gradient descent. So, so we haven't yet, so, so now we've defined a cost function. We've got everything that we need in order to fit a line to a model, okay? So, so um, there, there's two different ways that we can fit a line to a model in general. Um, um, uh, so we can use an exact solution using the normal equation, or we can use an optimization method um, like gradient descent. So gradient descent will be in the next video. Uh, but real quickly, um, if we have, so this, this actually represents an equation. So now, um, Or, or let me use this one. So, so now, b because here, you know, we, we've got the theta in here. So, so now, if, if I had this equation, and, and if I have different sets of thetas that, that I want to evaluate, if, if I could just plug in, you know, for all the different lines, uh, just plug them in and calculate their mean squared error or their root mean squared error and find the one with the smallest value, um, that would tell me which is the best line, all right? So... A, a way, if if this was, if it didn't, if this didn't have the summation in here, if this was just a quadratic equation with, with a, a squared term here, the way that you would find the minimum of that normally would be you would take the derivative of this equation, right, uh, and then the, basically since this is a square, it's gonna it's gonna uh, form a parabola, right, and then the minimum is gonna be the place where the slope is zero. If if you've ever taken a course in, in calculus and talked about finding the minimum or the maximum of an equation, right? And, and for a quadratic equation, there's going to be one minimum or one maximum, you know, so it's going to be either a parabola that's kind of up or a parabola that goes, um, you know, down with, with the top of the bottom. You know, the same thing happens here, although it's a little bit more complex because we have some linear algebra and a summation, right? But if you knew how to do that, so if you knew how to take the derivative of this cost function, you could find an exact solution, right? And that's, that's really what this... This, the normal equation is, so we've taken the derivative of the, um, uh, of the root mean squared cost function, uh, and we came up with this expression, um, and then we set the derivative to zero, and then we solved for theta, okay? So when you set the derivative to zero, um, and, and so, so when you set, you, know, you want to find where the derivative is zero, so that, that will be where the, um, the, the, the cost is at the minimum. Right, um, and then when you solve for theta, so you rearrange and solve for theta, uh, and that allows you to come up with this expression. And if you can solve this expression, this will tell you the values of theta that will minimize the equation, that, that will give you the best fitting line. All right, um, and it turns out, you know, so so it's not always possible to derive the derivative of a cost function, and even even if you can, it's not all often it's not always possible to um, solve it, or at least not easily. But in this case, for for linear regression using the root mean squared cost function, we can, right? So this expression uh, with a little bit of linear algebra, um, we can solve it. Um, and and in this part of the notebook, I show solving it by hand, right? So um, So recall that according to the polyfit function, the minimum values of our parameters was an intercept of 71.2 and a slope of 0.1345, right? So that, that, this was from when we called polyfit the first time, right? So if I just have my x, um, you know, which is the data I'm trying to find the minimum of, you know, you take the transpose of it in a, multiple, a matrix multiplication times x, 
um, and then you take the inverse of that so we can call we can use numpy's linear algebra inverse function to take the inverse of a matrix and do matrix multiplication again times x transpose matrix multiplication times y and, and that's your normal equation right right and if you do that you'll find you, get, you should get exactly the same result because polyfit um, Polyfit is probably using a slightly different method, some kind of, um, but, 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 you know, um, um, it, it comes down to the, the same. It's, it's using an exact solution um, like the normal equation, like we show here. So, so you get, um, you know, and, and any, any, anything, even like our gradient descents, which are uh, iterative methods that we'll talk about in the next video, but they'll also, because there's only one uh, minimum value, and, and I'll talk more about that in the next video as well. Right, uh, but there is only one true minimum for the root mean squared error, um, as it's defined, and it's and it's this point here, right? But yeah, so that's linear regression. Here we did it by hand, though, so we use the normal equation to find the um, um, the best fit um, of our model here. So. Um, uh, yeah, and so before I end the video, so then the other method I, I mentioned, so we can also use scikit-learn's linear regression um, object in, in the scikit-learn framework um, with a, some differences. So, um, so scikit-learn um, doesn't want to have that extra column with the ones on there, so I actually have to... Uh, uh, remove that or make certain that we use, you know, so it, it, it uh, adds in the intercept term itself um, uh, when you're performing a linear regression. Anyway, so yeah, so if you run that, again, you should get exactly the same result, um, although, you know, you'll have to get the coefficients and the intercept are, are provided in a different way, um, so, but you can get those from there. Um, All right, um, and the, this, this last part here is just to uh, kind of emphasize, make certain that you understand kind of what we've done so far up in, up in this notebook. So it's always good to, to maybe try this on. So the, the, the problem with the, the, the data that, that we've been using, this house data is, I mean, it's, it's somewhat realistic, but we don't know what the true I mean, we don't even know if it's really a linear relationship, but but uh, assuming it is, we don't know what the true linear relationship is. So so the estimate that we give is, is only an estimate. It's the best that we can give given the data. If we had more data, our, our estimate might change a little bit, right? Um, so that's what this last part of the section um, is meant to illustrate. So let's uh, instead of using um, a data that we don't know the true model, let's let's create our own data uh, where we actually know the true linear relationship. Okay, so we're going to have some data that we generate at random that has an intercept of four and a slope of three, right? And uh, but to make it so that you know um, um, it has. To make it a real problem, we're going to add some random noise on there. So we add some um, some some noise with a normal distribution, right? So um, you know, I'm not setting a seed here. So every time you rerun these cells, you might get slightly different data, but it'll look like this. Okay, so so th there really is a true relationship that that was governing this data. You know, it's it um, it's generated from a line with a slope of three uh, and an intercept of four here right but you know there's some noise obscuring it right so so um, um, the, the point is, is that if we fit a linear model to this um, you know we won't be able to exactly you know get the the exact relationship but we can see how close the best linear fit gets to the true relationship by fitting made-up data where we know what the true governing um, parameters are that, that, that generated our linear um, relationship between our independent and dependent variables here. Okay, so yeah, let's let's compute um, 
let's see, what do I use? I, I, mean, I guess I use the normal equation again. Um, oh, well, I, I guess I show all these again just for practice. Uh, you know, if, if you, all these should get the same answer, right? So, so um, notice, but, but again, it's not exactly. So when we use the normal equation, um, this is the intercept. So it was 4.2 and the slope of 2.7, right? And so these are reversed here, but, but the slope was uh, 2.7. Remember, the, the true slope is 3 and the intercept is 4, right? And again, the reason why you can't recover that is, is you know, the, the noise here makes it impossible um, to, to, to find the true relationship. So, so this is the best model that we, we can have, you know, given the, the noisy data that we have, the, the, the re representation of the, uh, the linear relationship that we're trying to um, find in our data here. Right? Here's using linear, um, here's using scikit-learn's linear regression. And if you plot the line, you get that, right? So, so this was our best prediction. Um, and we can compare that. Um, oh, um, I don't know why. I, I should have um, uh, plotted the, the, the true linear relationship um, on there as well so you can see what, the, uh, what it looked like. Um, so, um, So I, I do that, that down here, right? So, so here's the truth. So, and, and you know, you ought to read through this, make certain you understand it. If, if, if I regenerate this random data with the same relationship, but fit a line to it 100 times, so that's what all these grays are, right? So, so again, all of the model, all of the, the true relationships that we were fitting all had a slope of three and an intercept of four, but you get this variation because of the noise uh, in trying to recover the true linear relationship, right? And in fact, this will be basically the same as using the, like the, the Seaborn, right? So this is, this, uh, you know, so if my 90, if the calculation of my 90% um, confidence interval is working correctly, it's going to exactly capture this, you know? So, so since I did it a hundred times, uh, maybe 10 of these are a little bit out of that 90% confidence interval, but 90, 90 of these should end up being in what the confidence interval would be if I just did this once and calculated a 90% confidence interval, if that makes sense, all right? Um, all right, so yeah, this um, let's um, let's kind of review. So that was everything that I kind of wanted to to go through on this uh, video. So we worked all the way from kind of reviewing kind of you know lines and points and and our um, uh, the, the equation of a line uh, and use that to motivate what we're doing here when we're performing a linear fit. We introduced the, the concept of a cost function, so make certain that you understand that because then now our next video, we're going to use that for another method um, uh, known as gradient descent uh, in order to optimize, you know, to find the, the, the best kind of... Um, so what I kind of skipped over quickly, though, is that, uh, that, that even though there is an exact solution for this, that's not always the case. And even for linear regression, because of, of, uh, of performance issues, um, it's not always, we usually don't use the normal equation because when you have more than a couple of thousand or 10,000 features, um, it's going to be much slower to compute the best fit using the exact solution than it will be to use a um, optimization method like gradient descent. All right. So just in general, that's true. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, I hope that gives you the basics. You know, this, this is a real important video. Make certain that, that you kind of go through this and understand this one and the next one on gradient descent kind of form the basis of a lot of the um, details of what's happening uh, under the hoods of many machine learning methods, all right? So that's it, and I'll see you guys in the next video then.